Welcome your next comic for the evening. Give it up for Brenda Prince. Um, I am an urban indigenous person, and in the Ojibwe language, that translates to your cousins on the res hate you. <laughs> Grew up uh, in. I was born and raised in the city of Winnipeg. Hey, woo, 204. <laughs> um, Winnipeg is an Ojibwe word that means muddy waters. I guess because natives really love the blues. Boomers. <laughs> so, I was born in 1963, which isn't really that long ago if you're still alive. <laughs> So back then, my dad really admired President John F. Kennedy. And in our house growing up, we had a picture of JFK and Jesus on the wall. And uh, for the longest time, I thought that JFK and Jesus was the same white dude. I thought that um, JFK was just Jesus cleaned up and wearing a suit. Well, it's an honest mistake to make because all white people look the same, right? <laughs> so, um, in the 70s, you know, the, the buzzer ran at 9 o'clock and you had to stand beside your desk and you had to sing Oh Canada and then after that you had to sing God Save the Queen and then after that you could sit down at your desk and listen to the teacher read from the Bible for five minutes. And um, the Bible reading was my favorite part because that's where I really learned stuff, like how to zone completely out, <laughs> not listen to anything being said. And that's probably why I thought JFK and Jesus was the same white dude. So um, I hated being the only um, native kid in school. Uh, I wanted to be invisible. But I was like a raisin in a, a bowl of Rice Krispies. <laughs> you know, you're brown and cute, but you don't really belong. That's, that's how I felt. But, um, I heard my first racist joke in grade four. Alan, who I had a crush on, you know, he had blonde hair, blue eyes. Well, um, at recess, he told this horrible joke about why natives have high cheekbones. And after that, I never smiled again. And um, that's how I became a high fashion model. <laughs> so who's smiling now, Alan? <laughs> so Facebook says that he's working at the Bank of Montreal. <laughs> you know, BMO, whose motto is, uh, if you're brown, you're going downtown. Because you know what they did, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, I really wish, like, back then my dad read a lot of books about UFOs, and I really wish that a UFO would um, beam me up and change me into a, a, a white person and then place me back down. And um, can you imagine me as a white kid? Hello, mother. I would like to take clarinet lessons. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, alcoholism does run in my family and I'm often stereotyped because of my heritage. Like, if you can't tell by looking at me, I'm one thirty-second Irish. <laughs> and uh, my great, great, great grandmother was a white princess. So that I'm one sixty-fourth and two-thirds racist. <laughs> But, um, yeah, uh, so today, if you, you, I'm a proud 58-year-old grandmother. <laughs> Thank you. So I have five amazing grandchildren, and I got three adult daughters who, I guess they're meh, okay. <laughs> so one of them says, oh, mom, you remind me of the native Roseanne. And I'm like, gee, I don't know why. <laughs> I love my, my three daughters, Raven, Robin, and Roadrunner. 
I'm just kidding. Her name's Dakota. Um, I, I couldn't think of another bird name, and Swallow seemed kind of mean. <laughs> Pterodactyl was too traditional. So um, I'm a graduate of UBC. I have an MFA in creative writing, and uh, I am a ghostwriter. And by ghostwriter, I mean that I never finish anything, and then I <laughs> and I just disappear. So that's what I'm going to do now. So thank you very much. <laughs>